Welcome to Dove and Dragon Radio. I'm your host, Emma Ruschak. I'm here with my special guest, and uh, you wear so many hats, so I, I'm not even sure where to start to introduce you, but your name is Sharon Bolt. Welcome, and you're from the U.K., so this is another one of my awesome international shows. Hi, Melissa. So you have... You do books, but you're also an entrepreneur, and you have been on so many different radio shows, TV programs like BBC and things like this. How do you do it all? Well, I I just love media interviews. It's just so exciting, and it's so easy. I mean, I love it. You know, you right now I'm sitting in my home office talking to you. I'm in the UK, and, you know, as you say, it's an international show and an international call, and I just, just love it. It's easy, it's fun, and it's so rewarding. Now, you started, well, okay, how did you start getting onto all these shows? Let's start there. Well, I think people tend to be a bit shocked when I tell them about my first media appearance because it was actually on a national radio show here in the UK, uh, which is BBC Radio 2, and they have over 6 million listeners. Um, and but at the time, I had no website, I had no subscriber list, and no dog training business, which was actually the topic that I was being interviewed on. At the time, I had a complementary therapy business, but I was just so passionate about dog training after getting two eight-week-old Parson Russell Terrier puppies. And I was really wanting to transition into a brand new business, so I just saw this opportunity of being a guest on this national radio show, and I just really believed that I could help the listeners, so I just went for it, and it was so much fun. That is awesome. I mean, okay, being interviewed myself on a couple of smaller podcasts, nothing big like BBC, but, you know, it's so much fun to talk to people about whatever it is you're passionate about. Absolutely. And I, I just love it because you're able to get on a platform and reach your target market, which is, is just fantastic, mm-hmm. and just sort of like either educate or entertain the audience. And, and obviously you, you become... You know, you're on this platform, so you're reaching all these people. It can be thousands or even millions of people that you wouldn't necessarily have have actually reached before. Exactly. This is why media is so important to entrepreneurs. It's the base of your marketing. If you're not getting on radio or TV, you're not marketing right. You're not reaching everyone you need to reach. That's right. It has a huge reach. And and the lovely thing is, Melissa, it's free. I mean, (laughs) you know, not only do you get in front of your dream clients, you're also seen as an authority in your niche. Uh, You know, it's so different from advertising. Your prospective clients, just they just see you differently when you're featured as a guest or as as someone that's being interviewed in in a newspaper or magazine or being interviewed on a podcast show, a radio show, or on TV. You are then perceived as the go-to expert in your niche, which is something that you can never achieve by normal paid advertising. Exactly. This this is something I've been trying to get across to people all the time, especially the authors I publish. You have to do podcasts. You have to get in front of your audience. So yes. I'm so thankful for you to say that from a second point of view. <laughs> yes. It's so it's so important, and it's uh, what I also I mean I I love podcasting really so you know I I in fact I've got three podcast interviews booked this week I I just love them, and mm-hmm. the the thing is it doesn't matter if you're an introvert or an extrovert, you know you you I'm just talking to you it's the mindset that's really important you know I'm just in my mind I am talking to you you know you're I I vision envision you as a friend of mine we're having a chat over a coffee together no one else is around and that's exactly the mindset that I had when I was speaking in the the BBC studio to six million people because if I'd have even contemplated that it would have been far too scary so 
So I just focus on here, right now. I'm talking to you. We're having a, a, a great, great chat, and, and that's where I leave it. Perfect. Because this is how you need to go into every interview. You're just talking to a friend. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. It doesn't matter where you're at. It's just one-on-one. -on -one. Have fun with it and go from there. That's right, and and you, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get everything right. You know, you are human, and and sometimes people actually just really respond and relate to you if you stumble a little bit. You know, you don't have to get everything right all the time. Naturally, the content and the information you share has to be right. You're an expert in your field, and mm -hmm. and you are educating people. So of course, you have to get that bit right. But you mm -hmm. know, you're passionate about your business. You know what you're talking about but people can sometimes hold themselves back because they think well what if I stumble over my words what if I say um and ah and that you know it doesn't matter no it doesn't because we are all human beings we all have those moments where we pause we don't know what to say or we can't find the words it's a human element it happens it's, it's very true, and even if you and I just saying that can help somebody just to think, take that courage themselves and think, you know what, I might just give it a go. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of this, on top of talking to people on the media, you also co-authored two books, Successful Women in Business and Every Entrepreneur's Guide to Running Your Own Business. That's, that's right, yes. How did you get to that? Well, that, that's what's really uh, interesting. And I, what I really recommend people do is because, you know, look for different ways that you can put yourself out there and be seen as an expert in your field. And, uh, of course, if you are an author, it's brilliant because that automatically says that you're an expert. You know what you're talking about. And sometimes it can be a bit tricky for us when life is really busy and we just can't have them dedicate the time that's needed to write a, a complete book. So with the, the contacts that I know of in the, in the media, I was able to be selected to write a chapter in both of those books so I could have that, that um, author behind me, you know, as I can use that as being a, an, an author and be in part of those two books. So I, I wrote a chapter which was, time-wise, was easy for me to do than actually write a complete book. So that's, that's how that came about. Awesome. I mean, we all try to co-author or, okay, I do a lot of fictional books, so they're not co-authoring. They're in anthologies. So there's multiple authors per book. But we're all showing together, coming together, and getting our names out there. This is what you're doing with co-authoring a nonfiction book. And it just works. It, gives, it showcases your talent and makes you an expert in that genre. That's absolutely right, isn't it? And of course, the publishers who who have published this, of course, you, it's great because they are also taking care of the marketing as well to a big degree. Because mm -hmm. you are part of, uh, I think there was, um, I think there was about ten of us. So you know, every every one from those ten experts are marketing the book, and also the publishers are marketing the book. So it's win-win all the way. Exactly. This is what we do. You have to, okay, when you're a book author, it doesn't matter if fiction, nonfiction, self help, fantasy, doesn't matter. When you're working in an anthology, if you're working a co author situation, if everyone who's co authoring that book is marketing and then the publisher's marketing, you're getting cross, cross promotions across the board. Now you're growing your following exponentially. Yes. Yes, and that's it, what, it's a great way to do it, isn't it? I mean, yes. it's lovely to have your own book too, but mm -hmm. I haven't actually gone down that route at the moment. I've, I've been very lucky to co-author, you know, and, and also if you think about the, the book titles, it's very relevant to my niche market. So, so it really talks to the market that I want to reach too. So it was a perfect fit for me. Correct. 
I mean, you're not going to, okay, you're in the niche market of marketing, basically, getting on media, getting people exposure. That's what you do. Yes. So you're not going to sit down and write a fantasy book on dragons and fairies. It wouldn't work for <laughs> <No>. you. <laughs> I'm just pulling things off, you know, top of my head, but just have a stark contrast because it's not what you do. It's not your market. You have to write right. what you're good at. You yes, have to work absolutely. with yeah, what's your market? What? Who are you targeting to talk to? And that's what this is all about. Now, yes. what is the easiest way for you to get on these TV programs, these radio shows, doing these magazines and stuff? Well, I think the thing is that you need to do is say, say for example, it was a, a podcast show that you was wanting to be on. Mm-hmm. You would then look at at the podcast shows that have your your market your target market so you know it, i know it sounds it sounds straightforward really but of course i'm looking to be on business related shows because mm-hmm. because that's my audience mm-hmm. whereas i wouldn't pitch to be on a, a a fitness show for example so so obviously get very focused on the type of show that you would like to be on and this is obviously a show that has your audience listening to it. Mm-hmm. And and then this is very, very crucial. And this is, I would say, a mistake that people make very often when they want to, to be a guest on, whether it be a podcast show or whether it be a, a media channel. And that is they forget to do their research. So it's important that you listen to the show or you you read the articles that that journalist publishes or you watch the TV program or listen to that radio show so that you know how you can add value to the show and their audience. This is not about you and them promoting you. This is about you adding adding value to to the show. So this whether it be sharing an inspiring story that you have or whether it is that you you know tips and advice for people so it's how can you add value to the show that's really crucial but it's important that you do your research and your homework first and you listen or you watch or you read that media channel right and i i i try to get authors on podcasts all the time i'm like I'm giving you the information. Go listen to some of their shows. See how they flow. See if it's something that you can flow with because you also have to be able to have a conversation with whoever's interviewing you. It's not just one-sided. Exactly. I mean, you have to be able to talk as a friend, not as a here's my product and talk about it for 30 minutes. There's going to be questions. You have to be able to answer, and you have to have dialogue both ways. Absolutely. And I think if you have the the mindset that it's it's how you can benefit that that podcast show, how you can help that podcaster to grow their reach and to entertain and educate their their audience, then that that's the mindset to go on. It's what you can do for them, not what they can do for you, and then you're going to be on to a good good success there. So, in your mind, what is the biggest mistake business owners and entrepreneurs make when trying to get featured? That it is simply that it's that people, for, you know, and I understand why you would, as a business owner or an entrepreneur, do this. Is that you think, well, you say it's somebody who's got to book, and they just think, I need to, you know, they're told, I need to get some media attention. I need to get this book out there. there. This book is fantastic, and then they suddenly sit down, and and sometimes they don't do any research and just blitz it to the media channels many of which are not relevant. It's not what that journalist would ever feature or write about. So they just hit the delete button straight away. So that's where you ideally, always, not ideally, but you always have to research and and make sure you're a good fit. But then, of course, that's when the business owner or entrepreneurs, 
does this whole pitch about how wonderful this book is and how I've had years of experience of this. And, and it's like they're not interested. It's not what you can do. It's not what they can do for you. It's what you can do for them. So you make the, the pitch all about how you will benefit them. Why being on their show or them interviewing you or featuring you in their media channel is going to benefit them and, and their audience. When you go from that aspect, that's where it changes things. And that is what I see is the number one mistake that business owners and entrepreneurs make. Correct. See, I work with a lot of PR firms to get people like you on my show because a PR person, a um, PA, will have more respect to get you on the show than you just do it trying to do it yourself to, for the first time unless you have experience in writing those courier letters. Yes, yes. What I, I personally specialize in is teaching business owners how to do it. So how to do it properly, really, because you're absolutely right. If you've got no idea what you're doing, then it's, it, it's really going to go wrong. And, of course, that's where business owners get disheartened because they don't get any media interviews. They never hear back, and it, it, they never get any features. So it's about, for me, it's about empowering those, the, the business owner and the entrepreneur in order to be well-equipped and know exactly what to do so that they can do their own PR and have huge success. Right, and that, it goes hand in hand. This is why we need people like you to teach our entrepreneurs, our business owners, how to get on media. Everyone needs a media person. You need to have that media element to your, your advertising, to your marketing. But you're also benefiting whatever station, podcast, whatever you're doing by being on there. But first, you have to know how to approach them. Absolutely. Yes, that's absolutely vital, isn't it? And, and as I say, when you don't know that, that's where you make the errors. And, you know, you go gung-ho thinking, oh, I just need to get some publicity for my new course or my new book. And, 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 and I've been told I need to get out there. So I'm just going to blitz so many podcast shows and, and journalists and, and something's going to hit here. And, and it's like, no, if you if you don't know what you're doing, it's like any topic, isn't it, or any industry. Mm -hmm. You know, you 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 learn something. You go to the experts in order to help you do what you want to do. And the same is is with PR. Exactly. It, it's you need help to getting there. You're not going to be able to get there by yourself. That's the whole point of this conversation. You need to learn how to do it. Yes. And then when you do learn how to do it, I mean, just think, you, you know, when I did that, that first interview on that BBC Radio 2, now bear in mind I had no dog training business, that because of the credibility that I could put on my marketing, because I suddenly was very visible to people, I seamlessly transitioned from one business into another because I had that behind me. So once you, once you start getting this under your belt and you know what you're doing, I mean, that's where it really grows your business. And what I love, you know, we've got this pandemic at the moment. And the, the, with the media, it's, it's just perfect for this because, you know, we, if you're, you're in lockdown, if you're in social distancing, rules and regulations, it doesn't matter. You know, I'm sitting in my home office at home <laughs> doing this interview with you and that's not just during a pandemic that's always and that's what i so love about it exactly and right now the media needs more positive stories to put out there than just the pandemic because that's so that's negative right. and so disheartening we need those positive stories out there so right now unfortunately is a great time for you to quarry people to get out there to get positive messages 
That's exactly right. And you can obviously, with the media, it's all about currently what's happening. So you need to be relevant. So if you can can do something that's in line with this pandemic, so for example, you know, people are going through financial struggles during this time. So if you're a financial advisor or a wealth or money expert or even an accountant, you can give some really top class advice to people, you know, how they can apply for grants, step by step guides of what they need to do in order to get some income during this time. Of course, the media is going to love that from you. But, you know, mm-hmm. it, it opens up a whole host for so many different businesses. You know, a weight loss consultant. You know, people are putting on weight because they're, they're staying at home. So coming up with recipes and, you know, something different, something quirky. It must be something different than what people are doing. But I saw this video also today, and it was a hairdresser. And she was doing a tutorial, a video tutorial, about how to cut her hair. And she was actually put in a fringe or bangs, as it said in the, the U.S., mm-hmm. um, how she was cutting that into her hair. So, you know, even a tutorial about how to cut your child's hair or your partner's hair or your own hair, whatever it is, you know, there's a whole host of opportunities for people. Exactly, doing your own nails, doing makeup tutorials. Uh, there's so much things that we can talk about right now that, yes. one, they're needed. <laughs> Unfortunately, we need to get back to basics of how to do some of this stuff. But at the same time, they're positive. And that's the whole point of this right now is positivity. That's right. I mean, as you said, I've, I've got... Um, two businesses. One is my my dog training business, and one is my publicity business. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at some things that I was going to pitch the media regarding my dog business. And one of the things that I've I've come up with that I'm going to pitch is five easy but impressive tr- tricks to teach your dog during lockdown. You know, things like teaching your dog to high-five and and, and just things like that, fun things that, you know, that's very interesting to the media because it's it's light-hearted and it's entertaining to an audience of of dog lovers and dog owners during this very serious time. Exactly. We have to look at everything. We train our animals. You can train an animal in six weeks to do just about anything. How long have most of us been home on lockdown? Seriously. Yes. Yes. I mean, exactly. How many tricks could we have trained trained our dog to do in this amount of time? That's cute, funny, and takes out time and puts our head in to some place other than what's going on. That's right, and and people want this. You know, they. It's not that they. They, they, they probably think to themselves, I'd love to be able to do that, but they don't know where to start. So you as an expert in your, your field, you stand up and be counted. You, you create either an online course or a video or a step-by-step guide or whatever it is, and then you pitch the media about what it's, it's involved. Make sure that it's not something that's been covered time and time again because the media won't be interested. It has mm-hmm. to be different and a bit quirky to what's already been put out there. The, the media like new and fresh things. So, so if you're just sort of like doing the same of what's been done time and time again, it, it won't hit anywhere. But, but, you know, get creative and think about yourself. What would you like in this time? What are your, your potential clients or, or existing clients asking from you? What are their fears and concerns? How can you help them? That's the question to be asking yourself. Exactly. Now, we're almost out of time. This half hour went by so quick. Um, Where can our listeners find you? Well, I've got a free masterclass, so so people can, can do this right now. It's called Five Steps that gets you in front of thousands or even millions of your dream clients and positions you as the go-to expert in your niche fast. And this is without blogging, using Facebook ads or tech. So you can sign up for that just free of charge. And that's on my website, which is www.getfreepublicitytoday.com. See, very that's exactly what we need today for everyone that's listening is some free publicity. 
and thank you so much for being on the show today. I know it went back so quick. <laughs> it has gone really quick, and I, I'm, it's just been a pleasure, and I've just adored speaking to you, Melissa. Thank you so much for having me on your show. You are welcome, and please, anytime you have something new coming out, let me know. We'll get you back on here because this was a fun interview. Thank you so much. And have a wonderful day. And again, her website is getfreepublicitytoday.com. Talk to everyone later, and thank you again. Thanks ever so much, Melissa. Uh Bye-bye. Bye-bye.